In this video, I'll show you how I use AI tools with Neovim. In short, my approach involves three main tools. Copilot for auto completion, Avante for more complicated agentic tasks within Neovim, and CloudCode as an external tool for more complicated agentic workloads. I'll go through each one and show you how I use it, how to set it up and the benefits of it, starting with Copilot. GitHub Copilot was one of the first tools to integrate LOM systems for code editors. And I still use it for auto completions. It's very convenient sometimes. Let me show you my setup. I use uh, the Copilot Wool plugin. I'll show you in a bit. But uh, just to demonstrate how it works, let's just create a main.cpp file for simplicity. If we start, if I start writing some code, whatever code, it will just suggest auto completions, which makes sense sometimes. In this case, I'm writing a main function in C++ and it just suggests the hello world, world which I can accept with shift tab. That's just my setup. You can choose any, really any uh, key combination or key mapping you want, of course. It also suggests comments, as you can see. If I start writing a function, it, it most certainly will suggest something. And in many cases, it's a good starting point. Sometimes it's actually very a very good solution too. Now, um, my setup, I'll just go to my new Vim config folder. This folder will be shared in the video description. It's a public repository. You can access it and see my setup. You might need to tweak it a bit to your needs, but if you use new Vim, it will most likely work out of the box with some dependencies which are listed in uh, the readme of the repository. Now, if I go to my plugins folder, I use lazy. If I open it right here, I use the lazy plugin manager, which is the most obvious thing and the most widely used plugin manager for new I think right now. And I have this config for Copilot, which is quite minimal. Now, uh, a couple of notes. As I mentioned, I'm using copilot. Let me go to my browser and show you something. We have two copilot plugins for Vim. We have the official copilot.vim from GitHub, which, um, which is a working plugin that does the same thing I showed you without the completions. But I use the word plugin as if you open the readme here, it mentions it's a pure Wua uh, replacement for the official plugin. And the motivation behind it is that it's more efficient and it just integrates better with NeoVim, basically. Now, uh, here in the copilot.wua readme, you'll see everything you need to know about setup and configuration, but the setup is quite straightforward. We have, uh, like any lazy plugin, uh, to just this, uh, set the plugin repository. And then the configuration is quite simple. Most of these are my preferences. And I have this key map right here, which I'll explain in a second. But uh, here's my config. Uh, first of all, the suggestion section is when to suggest auto, auto completions. I enable it by default and I make it auto trigger. You might not want it to trigger automatically. You, you might want to prompt it to trigger with a key combination. Sometimes it can be annoying and it can recommend too much. If that annoys you and you lose focus, you can just uh, use it with a keyboard key binding. In some cases, there are files when it gets very noisy and suggests too much. I just disable it with copilot disable and then re-enable it when needed. Now, when you install the plugin, you have to authenticate. As you can see here, we don't have any tokens or authentication items or environment variables. You don't have to do any of that. Just uh, type uh, the copilot alt command. And right now it says I'm authenticated as a GitHub user and my GitHub user. But if you haven't authenticated, it will open a browser window and you will be able to log in with GitHub. It will make the authentication process. The plugin will handle the authentication process itself. So you don't need to do that, which is convenient. I disable the panel. There's a, some sort of a panel to chat with it. I don't need that because I use Avanti for these cases. I'll show you. I use Copilot only for uh, auto completions and it works quite well. And you can uh, enable it only for certain file types, which is actually the recommended approach. 
I enable it for everything. In fact, these should be unnecessary to be honest. Um, but I enable it for everything because actually in some cases it can suggest good textual content, not just code. After all, it uses arbitrary models. Yes, it's optimized for code, but when I write YouTube scripts, for example, in markdown files, sometimes it suggests good auto completion for sentences, which I like. I don't mind that. And finally, here we have a key map. That key map is a very simple. It uh, sets an insert mode um, shortcut right here. That uh, keyboard uh, key map, sorry, an insert mode key map. That's a shift tab for accepting the suggestion if it is available. And um, that's pretty much what this does. And that's how I use it because that's convenient for me. You can choose any arbitrary key map that you like for that purpose. And that's my Copilot setup. Avanti is the other AI plugin I use. Avanti is more complicated than Copilot. It brings agentic AI experience into new of them. It that mimics the behavior and functionality you have in something like Cursor or Windsurf. Now, let me show you how you can use Avanti. Uh, let's go back to our C++ file where we had a simple add function. The first mode of interaction with Avanti is if I highlight this function, for example, in visual mode, I get the tooltip that I can use leader AA to ask a question about the code or leader AE to edit in line. And that's very useful. I can say rewrite and rename this function to multiply. And it does that efficiently. And now the other mode of interaction is I can open the Avanti chat uh, using the Avanti chat new window uh, command. I can open a chat window. That's very similar to something like cursor. You have the chat output, selected files for context. You can add multiple files here or your entire code base if you want. And you have the chat box where you can prompt it to do something. And we have the main CPP file as context. So let's ask it to write a calculator using the multiply function. Also supports addition and uh, square root, just for complexity sake. And Avanti will use tools to actually generate diffs and apply the changes to the file like cursor would. As you can see, I see the diff. I can choose to accept it now and I will, as it seems correct. It generated the code. Now it asks me if I wanted to actually compile. Yeah, let's try that. Although it might actually not be able to do that. Let's see, we have calculator. Okay, we have add multiply square root. Let's test that. Enter two numbers, one. Oh, we expected two numbers. Let me see the code. Enter two numbers, see num one, num two. Okay. Let's try it again. At one, two, result three. Okay, that works. Let's try the other operations. That is correct as well. And square root of two. Okay, that's fine. Well, yeah, as you can see, it did uh, freeze when I asked it to compile with yes. The thing about Avanti is it still has some glitches. It's a community project. If you go to issues, you see um, there are some issues with some uh, modes and models. Because keep in mind, I'm currently here using OpenAI's API and uh, the GPT-40 model. But Avanti supports many models. In fact, let me see providers. The provider support is great. You have um, some of the first class uh, providers that are obvious. Open AI, any open AI compatible API, Quout, well, you have a great experience with Quout probably. Um, it also supports Copilot with the copilot.wo uh, plugin, Gemini, as you can see, Azure, and others. So it's great because it supports multiple providers. Another awesome thing. Let me open my config and I'll show you the configuration. 
So if I go to plugins Avanti, this is my Avanti configuration. Here I'm currently using the OpenAI provider, but you can also use Olama. And the providers are configured in this little block where you can define as many as you want and then just um, set the provider, the default provider right here. You can change it at runtime as well, I believe. If I select switch pro uh, Avanti switch provider uh, and I have to type the actual provider after that. But you also have the ability to use Olama, which is awesome. We can even test it. Let me start Olama. I have a small model here. It won't be ultra smart, probably. Have Quen 3. I believe 4 billion. If I remember correctly. And I have a plugin change. I prefer to completely uh, change this. Let's ask it something simple. Uh, rewrite this timeout to something sensible. We would be able to complete it. Yeah, it actually did. So it is working. Let me ask it something else. What is this config about? So this is using the local model. There we go. We have an explanation. That is quite good, considering the model we are using, and it's fully local. So um, let's go to the config a little bit. As you can see, it has dependencies. Some of these are not required. You can, of course, and I would recommend checking the actual readme in the GitHub repository, because here you have a lot of details and configuration options. I have disabled the auto-suggestions provider uh, Avanti can also handle auto suggestions for you, but I find Copilot more reliable than Avanti. And I like to use Copilot for auto suggestions because it's great for that in Avanti with different models than Copilot, like OpenAI. Um, yeah, I usually use OpenAI with clouds on it. Um, this debug option is, uh, of course, uh, for debugging purposes. I just was testing an issue I had, which is already fixed. Now, the thing about Avanti is, yeah, it has some issues here and there. It's a little bit rougher as an experience, like uh, compared to something like Cursor, because it's uh, still, I think, relatively new under active development. But issues get fixed. And if you report them in uh, GitHub, people would actually join you in uh, submitting other rare error reports. And eventually, uh, developers get onto the problems and fix them. And you can also contribute and fix issues yourself if you want to use Avanti regularly and you understand who and um, Vim plugins. Now, um, of course, these are the options uh, globally for Avanti. I don't have anything special, just the provider and that I don't want auto suggestions. For providers, I have my config for OpenAI, um, which is quite straightforward. Here, of course, you can use any OpenAI compatible, uh, compatible API. You can even use something like OpenRouter which has free models. If you just sign up, you can use um, some of their free models. Some examples of these are, as I mentioned in some of my other videos, you can use the Quen3 uh, 235 billion free model with some usage limits, which is quite, quite a powerful model for coding. And you can do that entirely free, Agentic AI for free. Um, you can use Owama and uh, cloud other providers as i mentioned and this is just the dependencies that are necessary as i mentioned you can use copilot as a provider too if you have a copilot account or subscription you just set provider to copilot and it will use the authenticated and it will use copilot.wo the plugin or copilot.vim for communication with copilot um, it is somewhat reliable i find the most reliable providers in Avanti, in my experience, uh, not extensive testing, just my personal experience so far to be OpenAI and Quout. I've rarely had problems with them. I've had problems with Copilot.
Last tool I want to mention is called Code. Although it's not integrated into NeoVim, it works very well with it. And I don't use Avante for serious agentic work because Cloud Code is significantly better in my experience and I prefer it if I want to give it a um, broad task like uh, to bootstrap a feature or implement something larger. And the way I use Cloud Code is with Tmux. I would go to my project folder right here. This is the calculator app we just built. I would use Tmux as my terminal multiplexer and start new Vim in one uh, session. And then I would create a new uh, terminal session with control BC. And now I can switch between session zero and session one. Here in session one, I would just start Cloud. And I can prompt Cloud Code here to make changes to my code base, which would be more general. Then I can review them in NeoVim and use Avanti for inline edits or code explanations, because the, what Avanti is great at is that it's integrated. So when I'm in the code, and for example, I want to understand how this works, I can just ask, or uh, if I want to, for example, insert comments here, I can say insert comments. While in Cloud Code, I would need to point it to the file, explain where exactly that place where I wanted to make changes is, that's not necessary in Avanti. On the other hand, if I want serious agentic work, like implement a feature with X, Y, Z, complex instructions, Cloud Code is exceptional at that. It creates a plan, follows it, uh, the model is very sophisticated. The Cloud for Sonnet model at this point in time, in my opinion, is the best coding model. Of course, there are other competent models, but Cloud for Sonnet at this point in time is my favorite. And the good thing is Cloud Code is a great tool and integrates very well in a terminal environment like NeoVim with Tmux, where I can just switch between code and Cloud Code quite simply and fast. And that has been a great experience. To install Cloud Code, it's actually very straightforward. It's a Node.js CLI, so I don't know if it's written in Node, but you can install it with NPM as a global module. You just need Node.js 18 or newer, and you just run it with Cloud, with the Cloud uh, command. And then if you're not logged in, it will prompt you to log in and then you can just start using it. Now, Cloud Code is a paid tool. You have a couple of options to use it. The most, um, the best value is if you have one of the plans. Let me show you. One of the individual plans is best. You cannot use it with free, unfortunately, but the pro plan includes some Cloud Code usage. Uh, I believe like uh, 40 short, 40 prompts, every five hours, which is a cloud session. And you can do max uh, for $100 or $200. That includes five or 20 times the usage, uh, which includes cloud code. But you can try it with the pro plan. In fact, I use it with the pro plan for my side projects because I do them for only a few hours a day. Uh, the other option you have is, of course, to use it with an API on a per token basis, but that's almost always more expensive than any of these plans. So they are usually the way to go for individual developers. So this is my AI toolkit in NeoVim. If you want to see some real world usage of these tools, you can watch some of my coding sessions, which are more raw and unedited videos where I just edit code and implement features for my side projects. Life using these exact tools, I use them every day. You can access the repository for my NeoVim config in the video description. There you can copy the config and uh, adapt it to, to your own, or you can just download the entire thing and test it out if you're just starting out with NeoVim. That might be a good starting point. If you enjoy the content, feel free to subscribe. And as always, take care.